your way to your, to your next, the devil will put a Judas in your now. So the question is, do I get distracted and discombobulated by the Judas in my now? Or do I keep my eyes on my next? Because what I may do by focusing on my Judas in my now, my next may shift. But because I don't have my eyes on my next, when it shifts, I'm lost. Because I've been focused on a Judas in my now. Let me help you. God has too much in store for you, for you to be caught up with negative, low-down, duplicitous people. Why are you worried about Judas in your now, when God has given you glorious, unfulfilled promises in your next? We're blessed to be a blessing. A life to make a difference. There's hope for my brother, hope for my sister. Life more abundantly. Hello friends, I'm Dr. E. Dewey Smith and I'm so excited that you've tuned into this segment of the Living Hope Broadcast. It is my prayer that you're blessed by today's broadcast. So many of you have reached out to us and I want to invite you to come worship with us in the city of Atlanta. Whenever you're visiting ATL Hot Atlanta, come by and holler at us. We're about 15 minutes on the east side uh, from downtown Atlanta. Come by, I'd love to personally meet and greet you. I stand down every week after the service i want to shake your hand and meet you personally let me know if you've been watching the living hope telecast today's message is transformative i hope it blesses you as half as much as it blessed me being able to deliver it be blessed today by the word of god you're watching living hope be blessed he was sensitive to the season but but not only do you need season sensitivity in order to sow in stinking, stinking situations season sensitivity secondly you need a sense of security can the church say sense of security? Sense of security? Season sensitivity, but also a sense of security. What do you mean? This is what's crazy. Verse 3 says, get this, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. There are three important values, points I want to lift from that one verse. The first thing about this sense of security that sometimes you can't sow when things are stinking if you're not secure. Insecurity can mess you up. When things get rough, you need to have a sense of security. Jesus has security, but what made him secure? To a receptivity made him secure. What do you mean receptivity? Check it out. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. Receptivity. What do you mean? Jesus says that no matter what happens in this next chapter, I'm cool. Because everything I need for my assignment, God has already placed it. I've already received what I need for my assignment. God and God's plans know exactly what I'm going to need and has placed everything in my hands for this moment. So, it does not matter what the disciples think about me. Because I'm not looking for them to validate what the Father has placed in my hands. I've got everything I need based on God's plan to do what God wants me to do, even in a stinking situation. You can have a sense of security when you have receptivity. But you also can have a sense of security also when you have your history. It's right there in the verse. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things to his hands. That's receptivity. Where's history doing? It's right there in that second clause. Check it out. And that he was come from God. Don't go another further. So not only did he have all things in his hands already, but secondly says, I know where I came from. He had come from God. Do you know a lot of our problems? We forgot where we came from. Some of you can't enjoy this service because that's I'm struggling. I'm, I'm sick of her. I'm just going to a bad place. That's like, a finance is not what it should be. I'm broke. Okay. Let me help half of you. Look back over your life. 
Because we right here together. I want to share something with you. Okay, I understand it's hard, rough time, rough patch. The book of your life. I'm sure this is not the first time you've been broke. Okay, look how you're looking. Look how you're looking. Look how you're looking at me. Can anybody beside me look back over your chapter of your life and say, Pastor, I've been broke. I've struggled before. Let me see you wave your hand. Some of you put both hands up your feet. Borrow your kids' hands. Help me around here. Can you testify I've been broke before? But here's what you do. Before you get depressed, look back to see where you came from. And when you look back to see how when you struggled before, God provided, God made a way, God brought you out. You didn't lose your sleep. You didn't lose your apartment. He kept food on your table. And if he did it before, do I have a witness in this house? As a matter of fact, you ought to shout right now because God's credit should be good with you. He's always provided. He's always made a way. That's why David said, I've never seen the right to forsaken. No, I see begging bread. Y'all forgive me. Shake your neighbors and say, neighbor, I know where I came from. I know what he's brought me out of. I know the ways he's made. I know the straps he's led me around. Open your mouth and tell the devil, I'm here. In spite of the struggles, I was sick, but I'm here. Mama died, but I'm here. Had divorced, but I'm here. Didn't know how I was gonna make it, but I'm here. And if he brought me out of yesterday, woo! I, f- I feel like preaching. Yes, I do. I feel like preaching. I tell you, God is a good God. He knew his receptivity. He knew his history, but he also knew his destiny. Receptivity, I got all things in my hands. History, I knew I came from God. Destiny, I know where I'm going. He went to, so what, what, what Jesus is saying here, listen y'all, in between my history and my destiny is a stinking situation. But look what happened in verse 2. Don't miss this. Because here's how it's, here's how it's thinking. F and supper being ended, meaning they finished. He just fed it. He just fed Judas. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. I'm feeding a guy. I got a guy at my table. Who I'm feeding. And he's full of the devil. And I know it. Verse 11. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So here it is. First of all, Judas is the treasurer of the disciples. He keeps the money, the disciples' mission fund. (laughs) Jesus brings the money in and they give it to Judas. Now, Jesus is at the table. I got to feed Judas. Knowing he's full of the devil. Now, come here. Now, all 12 of y'all, come here. Now, I'm going to wash each one of your feet. Individually. Including 
Judas. Now, I wouldn't have a problem watching this feet if I didn't know what he was up to. If I washed his feet and fed him and then found out later he shanked me, I'm hurt. I didn't know. But the whole while I was giving him money, feeding, and washing his feet, I knew the whole time. If it had been me, it would have been 22 feet wash. Not 24. <laughs> How do you feed him in John chapter 6? How do you calm a storm for him in Matthew chapter 4? How do you give him money in John 6? Feed him in John 13. Wash his feet in John 13, knowing I'm washing the feet of somebody who wants me dead. Wow. Let me tell you what, your, what our problem is. The reason why many of us can't endure and don't want to sow in stinking situation is because you don't know where you came from. You've forgotten where you're going. See, see, here's, here's the thing that even gets deeper, family. And it got me because when you come down to verse number 18, it's worse. Jesus says, now, some of you are not happy, some of you are not clean. He says, listen, but I'm not talking to all of you. I know whom I've chosen. In other words, Judas didn't volunteer be a disciple. He was a deliberate choice of Jesus. And Jesus knew before he chose him who he was. See, let me tell you, here's the thing. When you are going to your next, on your way to your, to your next, the devil will put a Judas in your now. So the question is, do I get distracted and discombobulated by the Judas in my now? Or do I keep my eyes on my necks? Because what I may do by focusing on my Judas in my now my necks may shift but because I don't have my eyes on my necks when it shifts I'm lost because I've been focused on a Judas in my now let me help you God has too much in store for you for you to be caught up with negative low down duplicitous people why are you worried about Judas in your now when God has given you glorious unfulfilled promises in your necks my God that thing is blessing me all over again I gotta take a break right now but please don't turn the channel I'll be right back. You're watching Living Hope with E. Dewey Smith. God bless you. I want you to say, Mat mature me, God. If, if you can't feed and wash the feet of your enemies, you're not ready for your promotion. Don't not shout. Now, if I said you're going to get blessed in three days, you'll be shouting. Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them. Uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us to help us to touch the young boy, the young girl uh, who has HIV, they help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, uh, the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become partakers and not just 
part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So uh, we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We, we're excited about people and transform the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, people around the world are hearing the Word of God. Jesus said, listen, I know who I've chosen. I know it. And I'm human. He says, and it, in my divinity, I knew it. In my humanity, I struggled. I don't want to feed and watch the feet of a joker who I know can't going to kill me. But here's why I got to do it. I had to do it so that the scripture may be fulfilled. See, it was in the Psalms, Psalm 41. It's in Psalms. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. It was prophesied in the Psalms about this moment. So when I can't do it in my flesh, I'm going to focus on what the scripture said. So when I don't want to do it in my wants, if I stay focused on my want, I'll never do it. So I'm not doing this based upon my want. I'm doing this based upon the word. Y'all missed it. See, see, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Here's how my perspective had to change. I'm a, I'm a dude from Macon, Georgia. South Macon, Pillar Street. I'm a guy who grew up in Bisham, Central High School, Tender Height, part across the Hillcrest Park, playing basketball. A church boy, athletic inclined, that spent a lot of my time out of school in the hood with dudes who want to try you because you go to church. They loved me because I played ball. I had two parents at home most of my life. Dad a preacher. You know, thank you all that. I want to try you, a church boy. So I never started one fight my whole life. Not one fight have I ever started my whole life. But not one fight have I ever turned down. <laughs> not one, my whole life. To this day, if you hit me, ain't gonna be no turn the cheek, ain't gonna be no read no scriptures. I'm gonna take this suit off, and you gonna know. I may not beat you, but you gonna know you've been in the fight. Come, somebody help me. Yeah, ain't no rules. So for me, when somebody tries you, you fight back. That's how I was brought up. And God said, and that's why you'll stay stuck in your now. Because Judas ain't nothing but a distraction. But if you look at it in your flesh, he's a distraction. If you look at it from the spirit, he's for your development. See, here's the thing. In six chapters, Jesus has to go to the cross and die for the whole world. In six chapters, he's going to be nailed to a cross and the soldiers that spit on him, he dying for them. So, Ju so Judas is inserted in his narrative. Because here's the reality. Jesus, how can you die for the forgiveness of the world? But you can't forgive Judas. So I'm sending you this, Ju this Judas to love and die for him. To get you ready to die for the world. This is not your distraction, it's your development. You know what God told me to tell somebody here today? Stop fighting back like me, like I used to, and still will. You know why? Because even the things you see negative are blessed. Do you know why God sent you those enemies? Here's about your perspective. Stop fighting them and realize the Bible says he makes your enemies your footstool. Which means when there's something that's high, 
that you're trying to get, but you don't have the elevation to get there, to grab what's yours. He said, what I'll do sometimes in order to elevate you so you can touch and grab what you're trying to get is put some enemies. So why are you trying to kill the people that I put in your life for you to step on to be elevated? And I don't mean step on in, 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 a, in a negative way, but they're going to elevate you. Here's the other thing. Why are you trying to shoot and cuss back and repost and get a clap back, they call it? Instead, you got haters? Keep trying to kill you? Judah, say thank you, Judah. Do your first favor. Go and wash your hands. Get some hand sanitizer. Get you a napkin. Put it around your neck. Get you a fork, spoon, knife. Because it simply means if you have enemies, he's getting ready to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You can't kill them because you need somebody to enjoy your meal in front of. Y'all miss it. No, don't kill them. I need you to be alive. And I'm going to eat this steak real slow. You want some? Can't have none, dog. He prepared a table before me. Let me finish. I want you to say, Mat mature me, God. If, if you can't feed and wash the feet of your enemies, you're not ready for your promotion. Don't not shout. Now, if I said you're going to get blessed in three days, you'll be shouting. Verse 18, verse 19, I'm finished. He said, I, I got to do this for the word's sake. Then here's what's shouting. John 19. He says, and here's why I got to do it. Not just for the word's sake. I'm closing this verse. I have to wash the feet, even Judas, because I have serenity. You need, I told you number one, sensitivity. Then number two, I told you, you need security. But number three, you need serenity. That's peace. Jesus said, I can be at peace. I've got serenity. I'm calm. I know what he's going to do, but I'm calm. I'm at peace. Here's why. Because I tell you before it comes that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. See, if Judas does not do this, if Judas does not betray me for 30 pieces of silver, I don't get arrested. If I don't get arrested, I don't go from judgment hall to judgment hall. If I don't get arrested, go to judgment hall to judgment, I don't come before Roman the procurator, Pilate, the Roman procurator. If he don't betray me, I don't go from judgment hall to judgment hall. I don't go before Roman procurator, Pilate. I'm not selected between him or Barabbas, which one of us is going to die. Number five, I don't go to the cross. Number six, I don't die. Number seven, the world can't be saved. So even a stinking situation, I can still so win it. Because my identity is going to be confirmed and affirmed. You're going to know who I am after all this. That's why when Peter said to me, Jesus, when I said, Jesus said to them, I'm going to die, Peter said, no, no, you're not dying. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Peter is trying to keep him from going to the cross. Peter doesn't want him hurt. He said, get behind me, Satan. He calls him Satan because he doesn't want him hurt. When Judas comes to kiss him with the kiss of betrayal, he said, hey, friend. The one who doesn't want him to die, get behind me, Satan. The one who kisses him with betrayal, hey, friend. 
You're my friend, dog, because even in your hurting me, you're going to help me to fulfill what I was put on earth to do. Thank you, Judas. I got to go through a stinking situation so y'all can know my identity. Can I tell you something? I'm closing. You don't know really who you are until you've been in a stinking situation. My friends, it's my prayer that you've been blessed by our broadcast. And if you have, let me hear from you. Send us a card. Connect with us on social media. Consider becoming a partner with us. Or why don't you order this message and sow it into somebody's life. Invest in kingdom development. You know somebody needed that word. Be a blessing to them. Sow it into their life and help us to carry the gospel all over the world. I need to hear from you now. Do it right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it now. I got to hear from you. I'm out of time, but I'll see you next time. Remember, you've been watching Living Hope. God bless you. I love you. Peace. Be transformed by Dr. Dewey's message. Everything I need for my assignment, God has already placed it. I've already received what I need for my assignment. God and God's plans know exactly what I'm going to need and has placed everything in my hands for this moment. So, it does not matter what the disciples think about me. Because I'm not looking for them to validate what the Father has placed in my hands. I've got everything I need based on God's plan to do what God wants me to do, even in a stinking situation. Order your own copy of this message today on CD or DVD when you visit our website or call 877-894-HOPE. Download the new E. Dewey Smith Ministries app today in the iTunes Store or Google Play. Connect with us wherever you go, on your phone, iPod Touch, or iPad. We have lots of great content to empower you. You can stream live and connect with us all within the app. Download today. Meet Dr. E. Dewey Smith in any of these great locations. Wednesday, June 8th at Consolidated Baptist Church in Lexington, Kentucky. Tuesday, July 12th through Thursday, July 14th for the 21st E.K. Bailey International Expository Preaching Conference in Dallas, Texas. Thursday, August 25th at T.B. Stewart Ministries Incorporated in Houston, Texas. For more information on any of these great events, call 877-894-HOPE. Five weeks, Barrett. My kid's godmother who helped us raise them in this summer. Two weeks later, Barrett, my mother. Three days after my mother passed, a 25-year friend, Reverend Danny Thomas, died. Three weeks after my mama's death, my sister died. The week after my sister's funeral, my brother had a stroke. Now God says, do it. You've been preaching to them, theoretically. But I want to move you from the theoretical to the experiential. And can I tell you something now? I don't need my mama's testimony that he'll keep your heart and your mind. He'll rock you to sleep at night. Now, when I tell you he'll give you peace, that ain't my sermon, it's who I am.